Hello, I am Victor Paredes. I am the product manager of Moho and I want to show you how to use the new Kerbers. So here we have an image layer imported into Moho and I can select this layer and now I can go to draw and create a Kerber layer. So I just click here and now a new layer will appear and this is the Kerber layer and you can see it has a line. So now I can edit this line by selecting the transform points tool and now I can move this extreme to be here on top and I can move this other extreme to be here at the end of the tentacle so now I can add points to the Kerber so I will use the add point tool and I will just drag here to add a point here and another point here and another point here all right and now I can also add edit the curvature so I can select the curvature tool so I can adapt the curvature to match better with the shape of the tentacle right so once I am happy with this let's suppose I'm happy now with this I can go to the line width tool and I can increase the width of the of the curve so you can see this blue rectangle here this is the influence of the curve so if you want to move something with the curve it should be inside of this influence so I will just increase that and now you can see everything is inside of the curver. So now, once I am done, I can go to any other frame. Everything I was working on now, uh, I was working on frame zero because frame zero on Moho is always the frame where you build stuff. So I was building this curver on frame zero. And now if I want to animate it, I go out of frame zero, let's say to frame 18. And now with the transform point tool, I can simply move the points and I can animate this shape with the curver. And I can also animate the curvature like that. And I can all even animate the language so I can make the tentacle thicker or thinner. All right, so let's suppose I want something like this. Okay, so now if I check my animation, I have the animation growing, going from this position to, to this position on frame 18. Okay, now let me show you something. I will just remove the keyframes I created. So I will just, just select them and press delete on the keyboard. And I want to show you this. If I use the transform point tool and I move this extreme, you can see the curve is, is becoming longer and the tentacle is also scaling with the curve. And you can see the scaling is proportional. The entire tentacle is growing to reach the new size. Okay. Now this is a normal Kerber layer, but we can change that. If I double click on the Kerber layer to open the properties, just double click it, I can go to the Vectors tab and I can check here on Compressible Kerber. So when I do that, I press OK. And now when I move the point, you can see only the part that is influenced by this point is actually being scaled. So it is compressing and stretching here. And if I move this point, for instance, you can see these parts are being scaled and compressed. All right. So we have a compressible curve layer working here. Now, when, when you create the curve layer, I will just go back to frame zero. I will remove this curve layer because I want to show you when you are going to create a curve layer, you can go to draw. And you can see you can create a normal curve layer or you can create a compressible curve layer. So you can make the decision of what curve, what kind of curve you can do here. But of course, once you created the curve, you can always go to the layer properties and just and check or check the compressible curve layer option. All right. Now I want to show you another thing. And this is another file and here I have a similar tentacle, but in this case it is done with vectors. So this is a vector layer and I just can select the vector layer and go to draw and I will create a compressible curve layer for this. So I will do the same now. So I will take the extremes of the curve and I will put them here and add some points here and here. And again, I can change the curvature to make it much better and increase the line width so the curve is covering the entire artwork here. All right, and let's suppose I am ready now. So now if I animate 
this Kerber layer, you can see it is working well. It's very similar to how the image is working. And I can move this, but if I move this point, you can see something weird is happening. The Kerber is not really following this point. Okay, and this is happening because this point is trying to move this section of the of the tentacle. But if I go to the tentacle layer, you can see that here there are no points. So the Kerber needs, for a vector layer, the Kerber needs to move points. It cannot move the shape if it doesn't have any points. So in order to fix this, what I need to do is to create more points. So the easiest way to do that is go, go back to frame zero. And now using the select uh, points tool, uh, by the way, I'm using the lasso mode here. So that's why you can have the rectangle mode or the lasso mode. I prefer to use the lasso mode. So I will just select all these points here. And now with the options of the select points uh, tool, I will just split this. So this is going to create new points. And if I split it again, I have more points. So you, you can see now I have several points across the tentacle. So now if I test the Kerber again, now I can move this shape, like this part of the Kerber, and the vectors are actually reacting to that. So you need to create enough points to move the Kerber, all right? Now, one of the advantages of using a Kerber for the, uh, using a Kerber over a vector layer is that you can modify the vector layer. So for instance, you can modify the line width if you want. Um, you can add a brush if you want. So let's just add this brush. And now the Kerber is going to work over that line width and over that brush. Okay. And another thing that you can do is that you can create, um, I went back to frame zero here. You can create a bone layer and you can put the Kerber inside of the bone layer and also the tentacle inside of the bone layer. All right. And now I, I want to create bones for the Kerber layer because I want to animate the bones instead of the of the points of the Kerber. So in order to do that, when I select the bone layer, I, I don't see the Kerber. So I, I'm not sure about where to point, uh, where to put the bones because I don't know where the points of the Kerbers are. So I will select the Kerber. And if I right click the Kerber and I go to quick settings here, I can show the paths of the Kerber. So what this does is that if I select the bone layer, now I can still see the points of the Kerber, okay? Even if I don't have the Kerber selected. So with this, I can use the Add Bone tool. Please remember I am over frame zero here. So with the Add Points tool, sorry, the Add Bones tool, I can just drag here and drag here and here and here. And now I have these bones ready for the Kerber. So now I can go to any other frame, use the Transform uh, Bone tool, and now I can move the, the bones and the bones are actually going to move the Kerber. Okay, so everything is still smooth, but I am animating the bones. And one of the advantage of that, advantages of that is that the bones, they move in arcs. So I can modify the arc of the animation so I can get a better result for the movement of the, of the tentacle. So maybe I will just do that here. And maybe at the end, it will take a, some time to go back. So I can animate the tentacle now moving the bones and the bones are moving the Kerber and the Kerber is moving the vector layer. All right. But now let's suppose I like the animation. I like the overall animation, but I want to refine some details. So if I want to edit the details, I can still go to the Kerber layer. And for instance, I can change the curvature of the Kerber or I can change the position of the points here for the Kerber. Right, so you have control, you, you still have control over the Kerber and the keyframes you added, they are added to the movement of the of the bone layer. So let's suppose here, maybe I want something more like this. So I, I have a smoother curve here. So everything is working here. So basically I can animate the bone layer and I can see the keyframes of the bones. I can animate the Kerber and I can see the keyframes of the Kerber itself. And I can even animate the vector layer. So let's suppose I want to adjust something here. So maybe maybe at the end, I want this point to be sharper like that. 
and maybe want to animate the line width so it will be thicker at, at this point and maybe it's going to be sharp here so I want the Gerber to be sharp at this point for some reason I know this doesn't make much sense for a tentacle but I want to have that part sh uh, sharp so now all the animation is working together and I can come back uh, with the bones I will rotate this to the other side like that and now I can select the vector layer and maybe at this point I want the tentacle to go back to normal in the vector layer so I can just select these keyframes copy and paste those and now the the vectors are looking okay again so you can animate all this so you have three levels of animation you have the bones you have the curve and you have the points all right another thing I want to show you because so far we have been only using let me actually remove this animation uh, for the for the tentacle we have been only using one curve layer over one layer right but you can also create a new layer and in this case I will just create a new layer here a new vector layer I am on frame 0 and I will draw uh, a few circles here so I will just use the um, freehand tool to draw some circles here okay so let's say I want this so now what I can do is I can double click this vector layer and I can go to the vectors properties and here I can select a warp layer the curver is a warp layer so here I can select the curver so basically what I can do is I can tell this new layer to also follow the curver so now these circles are also following that curver so if I move if I animate the curver here you can see how the circles are working so you can have many layers and they can all bend, be bent with the same curver okay and finally, I will just remove the entire animation here for all the layers. And actually, let me remove the circles for now. So I will have just this. What I can do also is, let's suppose I want to create two tentacles. So I can just select all the points of this tentacle, copy and paste them. So now I have a second tentacle and I will flip it here. So I will put it here. And now I will select the curver layer and I will select all the points of the Kerber, copy and paste and now I will also flip them and put them here so now what I can do is that I can animate both Kerbers so I can move the tentacles with both of them and if we want to create a body for the octopus let's say this is an octopus now so uh, an actual octopus I can just create this shape and maybe I will use liquid shapes so I will tell this shape to be added to the other one and maybe this one is going to also be added to the first one so now we have this shape and maybe we'll apply some blending uh, like that and I will re um, reduce the size of the stroke here okay let's say that so now I can move the curvers the curvers are moving the tentacles but I keep the tentacles connected to the to the main shape because I'm using liquid shapes with curvers all right and you can still rig this as a normal character so you can have a character that has two or more or more tentacles and they are connected together okay so that's it I hope you enjoyed this new feature thank you for watching bye